today's live actually came as a request from someone and I've got a couple of requests for lives to do over the next couple of weeks so that's brilliant which means that we're actually creating the content that you want to see. Somebody had this idea to stencil this one of these new designs the Bold Poisentia Bloom um, with just the anthracite ink pad so she wanted to create a, a monochrome look but we wanted to use the anthracite so we get this black and white image um, only the anthracite is one of these I think depending on the background that you put it on it's got a real blue hue to it a real blue um, gray blue possibly green if you layer it against a green background but it's perfect for creating different shades and creating this monochrome look as you can see here now this is the first one I tried out um, and this is just basically using your largest of your wonder brushes your stenciling brushes um, and just gradually building up the ink layer on layer as you go through each of the stencils so not really um, worrying too much about the shading that you're doing so you're starting off with the first layer of stencils with the really lightest ink the next layer of stencils that you you put the ink through you go slightly darker and so forth so you go through there so if you just want a really quick monochrome look you can achieve it quite simply with the anthracite with um, one just the largest brush here so it really is just a, a really quick method and this is the the result that you get which i think works so well i then went on to experiment a little bit more and i created a second image here and i've actually used the smaller stencil brush for this and what this has done it's given me the ability to create more detail and therefore go in with a lot more shading and you can see the difference between the two can't you? You can see here that I've actually gone in with a lot more darker areas and I was able to create a lot more shading, a lot more depth to the image. And that was all because I used the stencil brush. Now I actually went through and created all of this image just with a smaller brush. And I think what I might do in a second once I actually get stenciling, I'm going to use a combination of the two because otherwise I'll be here all day. Now this is a project that you can either get done really quickly and you create an image here, or you can really spend an awful lot of time on this, really go into depth and go into um, so much detail with this. Um, I also tried something else out. Now, because we're going monochrome, monochrome the idea of this is to actually create a lot of depth with shadows and different intensities of ink colour. So there are therefore there are very different ways that you can interpret interpret the image. On these two previous ones, what I was doing is actually concentrating on creating shading around the outside of each of um, the elements of the image here. See that. Um, yeah, so you can see they say this is quite not a flat image. You, you've still got that element of shading because of the um, how clever the stencils are. This one you have the element of shading around each of the elements here, so you can start creating that depth. But each time I was actually focusing on keeping the flower and perhaps the berries um, quite white. So I thought I'd just give it a different go and just put a completely different emphasis on the image by actually stenciling the flower really dark and the berries a lot darker so it really is a case of just having a play and just going with what sort of image you have in your head at the time now on screen that's coming up a little bit too dark I think but in, in real life you can actually still see all the sort of the detailing and I think if you went on then to emboss this to actually bring out those details that that would look stunning as well and of course when each of us stencil we all put down a different amount of ink each time so what I might think is a light layer of ink would be some um would be a lot heavier if someone else would do it and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. That's just how we stencil. So what you would do, you would just adapt this technique to however 
you stencil and however you lay the ink down. So I think this is going to be quite amazing. If, if you all were able to give this a go, we would all get very different results and they would all be equally as stunning because all oh, as scary as it seems just stenciling with the one color particularly the anthracite which in in essence when you look at it like like this looks like a black ink pad but look what you can create from it it's so much more than just black ink so let's get stenciling i think what i'll do i'll use a combination of the two brushes here and I may even come in with these smaller ones as well that I have sitting here so I can show you how the ink is built up in the different sort of formations. My ultimate aim is to actually end up with something quite detailed like this, just to show you how it can come to life. Um, I'm working on Lisa's Super Smooth cardstock. So let's get going. I've got myself just a square of the super smooth we've got the stencil pack here just to give you an idea of where we're going with the layers because I think these are really useful to give you an idea of what a particular stencil or how this particular stencil sits within the image I think that's important when you first start stenciling obviously once you've used it a couple of times you do get very familiar with with the images and once you've stenciled it initially you can swap and change between the different layers and I think that's possibly what I may end up doing to create something like this and I'll show you how that all works together. So let's get going. Okay so one of the things that I think I would suggest when you're creating an image is like this is not to put too much ink on your brush always you less is more at this stage if you want more color and you want more depth build up to it always work to your lightest ability first because um obviously you can't take it away and creating a monotone or a monochrome image is all about building shadows and layers so i've just picked up a little bit of ink Use your stencil as a tool. Use your stencil as the tool to blot off excess ink from whatever brush you're using before you stencil through the aperture, that is what I would say. So initially, I'm just going to go for this more, um, I don't want to say simple image, but this is probably the quickest image. So I'm just really laying down a bit of ink just through that stencil. To start with and you will always see me working off the stencil material first use it as your tool to blot um, fortunately with this stencil there's a lot of areas um, of plastic um, that are available for you to do that on so go right into the corners and just lay down some ink in all of the the apertures that you see there. Now, to me, I could have possibly gone even lighter than than what I did there, but that shows up quite well. So what I would do now is stencil number two. Actually, what I will tell you, there are five stencils in this kit, actually. We get a really detailed image, but we only have five stencils. So it does build up quite quick. So this time round, I would possibly lay down just a little bit more ink now, it doesn't mean that I'm going to add more ink to my brush. It just means that I will go to my ink pad more often and pick up more ink and just perhaps press a little bit harder or just make sure that I go over each area perhaps more times than I would have done on that first stencil. And that is what will build up that intensity of colour for you. So without worrying too much at this stage about created shaded areas um, on the leaves, all I'm doing is just adding a slightly darker layer of ink through this second stencil. Now, if you're unsure if you've gone darker on this level, um, on this stencil than you have on the previous one, just have a little look. Just lift your stencil. I've got to be careful because my card is the same size as my stencil there. But just have a little look. You can either take it off completely and see, 
or you can just lift it up like a, a page of a book. But you can see at this stage that you've perhaps put on just that tiny bit more ink than you would have done on that first layer. If you think you want to add a little bit more, then just go back in and add a little bit more, you know. So it really is about how this looks to your eye. Okay. So we've got that second layer there and there is a slight difference in the two layer sets of leaves there. So now we're coming on to our flower and at this stage you want to decide, do you want to go for a dark flower? Or do you want to just keep the flower light and then we'll add the details to the flower on top? Um, if you go dark, like I did here, it's interesting to see that if you then change your brush, you can still add layer on top of that and get to see that detail of the veins. So this layer also is where we start introducing the berries. So I think what I might do this time around, I think I might go a bit darker on the berries and leave the flower sort of lightish in the background. Now I would say err uh, on the side of caution when you're laying your ink down through the flower here because it's a large area it's quite easy to get carried away with laying down too much ink uh, or, and it may appear darker than you perhaps um, were originally anticipating. So, I'm going to put a little bit more ink through this area here because that's where the berries are. So I will just create that point of difference there. And what I'm really doing actually with the flower is just going around the outside. There is an element when you're stenciling, and you may have noticed this if you're already familiar with using Lisa stencils, is that the moment that you cross over from the stencil material over the lip onto the cardstock, there's just, I don't know the science behind it, but it basically creates an area of shadow for you anyway. So use that, use that fact, um, because that's immediately sort of, creating a dimension for you without you even trying. So if I take that away, you will see that just round the outside of the flower there, you will already see just a darker image, almost a really faint line. Um, and that immediately creates a sense of dimension, I think. So, we got stencil four, so this will bring some detail into the flower here and add a couple more of the berries. So there's different ways to tackle this. Um, what I like to do to keep the main bulk of the leaves still light, I would work around the outside of the flower and then I would work from the centre outwards. So I'm going to create circular motions from the centre of the flower outwards so the concentration of ink will be more on the center of the flower and it will sort of diffuse out towards the edges of the petals if that makes sense so i've picked up my ink i just blocked off from the side there just working on the center and before i even touch the paper actually what i'm doing i'm just making the circular motion and then just lowering that down onto the cardstock and just going round and round and round. And what I will do eventually, once I can start seeing the ink be placed onto the card, I will widen or make that circle bigger. And that will just incorporate all the rest of the details of the flower for you. And that is just giving subtle shading. What I'll then do is just pick up a little bit more ink again, blot it off and just go back round the edges of the flower like I did with the previous stencil. Just to catch a little bit more detail that we have because this layer of the stencil actually is slightly smaller. So we will actually end up with a bit of a border around the outside. And again, once you get familiar with the stencils that you're using and what each layer does, you'll know sort of where to add your 
um, extra ink if you need to. So I'm just going to come back in, perhaps put a little bit more detail on the berries there. So they appear darker, just perhaps do that. And if I take that away, you can start seeing the dimension of that flower coming together. So this is the last stencil. This is where we add a lot of the detail in, of, and the veining for the flower. So I am using the larger brush still. You still see this. And I think what I will do, I will stencil a second image for you as well. And this time I'm, I am coming in darker because we put in less ink on the paper, but it's in sort of smaller concentrated spaces, isn't it? So um, I'm just going to quickly go around and make sure I cover all of these details. And remember, this is just sort of just basic stenciling. And this is sort of where this third, this is the actual way round that I stenciled. That was the first one that I'd done, and this was the second. So this is without worrying about picking out any of the detailed areas for shading with a smaller stencil brush. So you have your monochrome image there, and you can see that layer of depth in there. Now that can actually be brought out an awful lot more and I think that's what we'll go on to do with our next, our next image. So that is how we created this one here and even that looks different, doesn't it? Um, what you can then go on to do is emboss that and it will bring out all those features again. So we'll leave that there. I'm just going to get myself a second piece of cardstock here. I thought I'd cut a piece down, but I didn't. So we'll come in with a second piece of cardstock and we'll, we'll attempt to create this one where we have a lot more detail going into the image. So it really depends on how much time you have to create this project and sort of the detailing you want to add. So. have a larger piece of cardstock there. So this time I will come in with, I think just for quick, quick and easiness actually, I will just use the stencil brush initially just to put a little bit of ink down. Um, I did use the smaller stencil brush when I created this, but obviously I had the, um, I had the advantage of time there, but I'm just create just an initial layer of ink there. So I'm going to come in with this smaller stencil brush and now what I'm going to start doing is just creating shading. The way that I work this and the way that sort of works in my head is to me the flower image is going to be in the centre. This is all the blocked out areas. So I want to have the shading from the flower outwards. So it's basically anything from the centre out I, um, is how I'm going to create the shading. So the shading will be darker on the inside and as it goes out towards the outer edges of each of these sort of apertures, that's where the shading is going to go. That's that's sort of the way that I make it work in my head, as it were. So this time again, I'm using um, the stencil as a tool to blend off a lot of that ink. And I'm just creating a darker area on the inside of these images. So it then blends out to almost sort of pale on the outside. Some of these smaller ones, obviously you can't do that. So um, it's your choice. You can either leave them pale or you can go in dark. Um, you can see this time I'm actually using a lot more ink because you'll see a lot more sitting on the stencil here. Um, and I will alternate between using the brush and circular motions and just pushing the other way I'd like to do it is just pushing the ink in strokes just from and wiping it from the stencil through the aperture. I think that's quite a nice way to control where the ink's going. 
So you can see, I am just stroking. Can you see that? If I keep my hand out of the way, I'm just sort of wiping the ink from the stencil material into the aperture. And that again gives you a nice graduation of colour. And you, it's almost like a flicking motion, basically. That's the way you can do that. So you don't need to be heavy handed with it at all. Again, it's quite therapeutic. I mean, how often you sort of do that It when you haven't got anyone watching with you <laughs> and you have um, all the time in the world. You, this is where you can start creating that sort of real depth of colour in the detail. And I think it's actually really interesting to just use one colour. It makes you think about what you're doing, makes you think about the stencil. But equally, this would work with any um, colour, I think. Imagine if you were using a purple. That would give you really lovely depths of colour. You go from the real lightest of lilacs, wouldn't you, um, through to the real deep, rich purple. And you can really build up that colour graduation really well, I think. So I'm just making sure that I've got an element of shading in each of these areas here. Um, so this stencil at this stage possibly doesn't make a huge amount of sense with where it is um, in the image, but you can always go back, which is what I did with these ones, just to make sure, just to tweak it. So you can see already that first layer that we've got now compared to when we done the first image is already looking more detailed and there's a lot more shading going on. So we come in with stencil number two and we do exactly the same again. Now I think we could possibly afford to go darker so we can add even more ink but still use the same technique. Still brush it and stroke it in from the stencil material into the apertures but just use more ink so you're creating um, a darker layer, as it were. And make sure that all of the, the image is stenciled, even if it's a lighter amount. The parts of the image that come out towards the outer areas, you don't need to put as much on, but obviously you do need to put something on because that will give you the suggestion of the shape of the aperture, if that makes sense. So we can actually start seeing how dark this ink really goes doing this. And we can just blend it out. Um, I'm using one of the smaller brushes, uh, mainly because to be honest, I didn't have a larger brush to dedicate to this color. And I think it's actually worth noting that if you are do have the anthracite ink and you have the white ink as well. Um, it's worth just dedicating a set of brushes to each of those colours because obviously um, if you were to accidentally pick up this brush and use it in another ink pad, if it was any lighter then you saw you would contaminate um, the other ink pad. And you wouldn't get the colour on the cardstock that you was after. And equally with the white as well, you want to keep your white ink pad as clean as you can for, for as long as you can. Look, the way that we craft it, it isn't going to stay clean forever, is it, to be honest? But um, we can do our best at giving it a try. So dedicate um, a set of brushes to this anthracite colour and also um, a set of brushes to your white ink pad as well. That's That would be my suggestion. Um, and I actually keep them away from the rest of my ink pads just because they are so different to everything else that we have. If you were to interchange your brushes with the other colours, I don't think it matters too much, but these are sort of quite extreme. So in doing that, you can see I've laid on a lot more ink and taken that away already. We have a far bolder look on our ink pad, um, sorry, on our paper. And you can see now where that flower is going to be sitting. So we introduce that in now. Now, this time, I'm picking up a lot of ink on my brush and starting off on the stencil material, sort of wiping it along. And this time, I really am just pushing that over the edge just so as it sits on to that cardstock there. So really, all I'm doing is just colouring the edges of the flower here. And I'm probably creating that 
to be these edges of the flowers or the bloom as dark as I possibly can because that is going to give us that real depth around the outside of the the bloom. And there really isn't anything too complicated in this at all, is there? I mean, it is just laying the ink down in a very different way to we did on our first thing, but um, it's not, there's no different techniques as to what you would have already been doing with a lot of your stenciling um, with Lisa's products anyway. It's just perhaps be just being a bit more conscious that you're not swapping colours and just being a bit more conscious that you do need to create perhaps a little bit more definition between each of the layers, but that is easily done. Again, I'm just going round and round. I am going in circles this time round. Some of the areas will turn out a little bit darker than others, but that isn't too much of a worry. What you can do actually, if you find that you're perhaps not quite as happy with the blend, if it's perhaps not quite as smooth as you would want, just come in with your larger brush and just really lightly just go over. And what that will do, that will just end, you know, ease out a lot of the blends that you've added. So there is, you know, you can, there are ways of working and slightly correcting, especially while you've got that little bit of open time with, um, while the ink is still wet. So I'm just go around in this. And I think it is worth me doing this for you so you can actually see this come together. And if you notice here, the, the middle of the flower, I've left completely white. It isn't going to be stenciled at all. Not on this level anyway, not on this layer. Obviously, um, the other stencils will introduce the colour that way. But this time, I'm really not worried about bringing ink into the centre of the flower there. So I've gone all around the outset edges. Don't forget the berries up here. I think I will just... At this stage, I'll just add the ink through there and create a little bit of shading in a second. Okay, and I think sometimes you see when I actually do the brush strokes like this and I stroke the ink as opposed to going around in circle motions, it actually creates a bit of a brush stroke ink. It actually creates a little bit of texture as well. So if I take that away, you can see now how that bloom really pops through because we have the definition of that dark edge. Oh, hi, Linda. Brilliant. I'm glad you all managed to catch the live. Um, okay, hopefully I haven't frozen. My screen is frozen, but I shall carry on going. So you can see the definition of the flower there. Now we can come in and bring in the definition of the petals themselves. So we can work from the center outwards. And again, don't be frightened of adding a lot of ink this time round, and just do the same thing again. So a real concentration of ink as close to the stencil line as possible and just really blend it out towards the edges. That will give you a real good um, chance of adding sort of depth and shade in there. Are you all still with me? Yeah. Okay. So let's just blend that up. And all I'm just going, I'm going up the veins of the flowers. So Lisa's basically given us where she wants the shading. So that's what we follow. Um, all that guesswork has been taken out for us. Which, again, is the beauty of using these stencils. We really don't need to think about where that shading goes. Um, I'm concentrating around the edges again because I think that gave me before a really nice sort of depth and it sort of incorporates all where the folds of the flowers would be. So make sure we bring that around. And if you perhaps think about um, how flowers sort of arrange themselves in the garden, they areas where they fold over, areas where um, 
petals are sitting next to each other, that's where the most amount of shadowing naturally occurs in nature, isn't it? So if you bear that in mind also, that is where you can concentrate the areas of ink that you're adding, if that makes sense. Um, I, I know there are tutorials on sort of light sources and shades and whatever. I mean, I haven't actually gone into depth in those myself, but what I do like to think about is how these flowers would actually appear outside in my garden. And if you have a lot of leaves all together or clustered together, then they're more likely to create shed shaded areas than single leaves by themselves. So that's sort of the the technique I use when it comes to shading. Um, I'm adding some detailing on these berries at the top here and just on the underside I think I'm just going to add a bit more ink because that's where I think the areas of shade would be and the same on here as well. Again I think when you're using the monochrome it's open to such interpretation You could have these berries a lot darker than I'm making them, perhaps more similar to the image that I've created there. And I think what I'll do just to blend out and just sort of smooth that down, I'll just come, come in with my brush and just perhaps even out any of those unblended bits that I have. And what it does actually do is just take away all that excess ink that's on the stencil as well. So when I bring that away, you can see that element of shading going on there. So the last stencil is where we bring in the, the veins of the leaves. I will come back to my brush this time because I don't want these to stand out too much. I don't want the veins now to be the main focus because I want the shadow of the flowers that I've just created to be the main focus. I just want this just to blend into the background and of course add the detail. What I will do, I'll just put the extra detail on the berries and just make sure that they pop. But the rest of it, I really do want that to be sort of quite lightish. Um, and I think also I'll put the extra ink right in the center of the flower, because I think that will just suit the way that I've shaded the flower there. So when they take that away, you can see the advantage of having those lighter veins. It really makes this flower stand out. Now, this is where I would suggest you perhaps go back. You look at your image, think where you want more detail to be, and then you can go back in with the different stencils. So I'm looking at these leaves here. They need to be defined a little bit more. This leaf is sitting further forward than these ones at the back. So therefore that there would be shadow underneath these. So I need to find the stencil that gives me this leaf. So that would be this one here. So what this area is the leaf that is sitting forward. So therefore I want to create a bit of shadow going into this leaf here. And equally, we know that this leaf here, this area that is um, masking what is on the cardstock, that leaf is sitting forward. So anything around that and un will be sitting underneath. So therefore we want to have a lot of shadow basically around this leaf. So all I'm doing is just adding that extra bit of ink and just brushing from the stencil material, just pass that stencil line onto the cardstock and you can see without removing the stencil that we have a darker line forming. So all of the areas around this, this leaf, we want to create a darker area. Does that make sense? Even that bit here, so I'll just bring a bit more ink on. And this is the beauty of using these stencil brushes. You can either use this or you can go in with your smaller one. There we are. And just literally, it's just a dark line. You don't want that line to be blended out and to be um, a real smooth blend. 
you want to have that dark line visible. So when I take that away, what that's done is immediately brought that leaf forward and those leaves underneath are in shadow. Equally, there's a really thin leaf here, which is sitting more forward than the leaf underneath. So again, you find that detail on the stencil. Fortunately, actually, these ones are on the first stencil that I picked up or stencil number one. So I just do the same again, just create that dark line around the area of the stencil. I don't need to blend right into the whole of this area, just create that dark line around it. And when I move that away, that thin leaf has already sort of popped forward because of the shading that you've used. I'm going to create a bit of shading on this little area here. It's not that stencil, it's possibly this one here. So I'll bring in stencil number two and it's this area here. So I'm, I want to create the shading into this area here. And you don't need to add too much. I mean, just look at the amount of ink that I've added there. Really not much at all. But what it done, it, it does, it just creates that defined line between those two areas. And you would work all the way around that image and you'll just see the areas that perhaps just need to be picked out and made more bold. But I think that works as, as it is. And that is how I created this image number two here, um, mainly using the stencil brushes. And this one, it would take a little bit longer. So I would say this is more of a, a project, but it really doesn't take too long at all. And um, you really do get quite engrossed in it. You really do. I mean, all of the, the guesswork has been taken out because you know where to add the ink because of the stencils. And don't be afraid, just because you've gone through the stencils one time, go back. Go back and mix and match and swap and add a little bit more detail here and there. And you will build yourself up to, to get the image that you um, that you really knit, that you really want. So that's actually worked so well, doesn't it, with just the one colour. And don't be frightened, it is not a black ink pad. You can see there is a blue hue. So actually in doing this, what I wanted to do, and I've been meaning to do it for a little while, um, and when I look out my window sitting here with you now, I've got a whole hedge um, of hydrangeas of pinks and purples. They're lovely. So it's great that we have the stencil, the hydrangea stencil from Lisa. But I have a couple of um, plants out there that are pure white. So it really sort of got my imagination going. I thought, well, I can use this technique on the hydrangea stencil. So that's what I've done. And that, I think, is just super, super pretty. That I was just really, really pleased with. So to create a white flower, obviously, you don't use a white ink pad. Um, you, use an, uh, you use an ink pad to create the shading to give you the illusion of a white flower. Now, obviously, we've used the anthracite on this, but it would also work with um, the cobblestones ink pad. And it will also work with the, oh, it would also work with painted eggshell. I think these colours would be perfect um, to try. So if you don't have the anthracite, I wouldn't worry. Um, if you have either one of these two colours, I thought, um, I think these would work equally as well with exactly the same um, technique. Um, so give that a try, but that I think is just, just stunning. And um, this just simply just mounted onto a card like that with a lovely sentiment, I think is just brilliant. I really, really like that. Um, but then equally, these are, these work as well, you know, and actually going back to the one that I done today, it actually worked out a little bit darker than this one I done to start with. So you will get a different image each time round and each person who does this will get a different level of shading so it'll be lovely if you do give this a go thanks so much for joining me this afternoon i actually really enjoyed that i was looking forward to to that live um 
Enjoy the rest of your week, everybody, and I shall see you again the week after next. Take care. Bye now.